Oh, hello. Welcome to this video about beer and food. I'm Alison and I co-run the Hop In Micropub in Hornchurch. I'm a drinks educator and a trainer and I run tastings and supper clubs here in London. Beer is an amazingly versatile drink and an excellent choice when you're looking for something to pair with what you're eating. Whether it's fresh ale from the cask, a can or a bottle, they'll be that perfect partner for your plate or snack. In this short video, we're going to be exploring three main areas. First of all, the principles for you to think about when you're successfully matching beer and food. The main styles of beer and the kinds of foods that will work well with them. And finally, the wonderful combination of beer and cheese. So we're going to begin by exploring the principles you need to think about when you want to match beer and food successfully. To begin with, we can think about the basic flavour elements. Now, when we think about flavour, often we talk about taste, as in taste buds, those things on the tongue inside the mouth. But actually, it's only up to about 20% of what we perceive as flavour is coming from the taste buds. There are five main flavours that we can perceive and identify through those taste buds. I'm sure you've probably seen these before. So to begin with, we have sweetness. and We're programmed to crave this because this is all about energy and one of the building blocks of food. Then we've got sourness, that mouth-watering sensation and the mouth-watering flavour. Then we've got saltiness. Again, we need salt uh, to function correctly, so we do crave saltiness in food and drinks. Then bitterness. Now, different people are sensitive to bitterness to different degrees. Some people not very sensitive and happy to drink uh, bitter drinks and eat bitter food. Some of us are around the middle and some people are super sensitive and don't enjoy bitter flavours. Then finally, number five, we have umami. This is a meaty, savoury, brothy flavour that lingers in the mouth. It's built on amino acids and comes from things like Parmesan cheese, uh, beef, mushrooms that are cooked, soy sauce, even beef tomato. Then we can think about aroma. Now aroma is really important and it's believed to form almost 80% of what we perceive as flavour. So it's much more important than we often think. And when we think about aroma in food and drink, it's not just about sniffing food. So as we're eating, of course, we bring the food or drink to the mouth, to the nose, and we get those aromas coming up the front of our nose. This is called orthonasal olfaction. So olfaction being smelling or aroma, and that orthonasal olfaction is what comes through the nose when you think about sniffing or smelling food or drink. But much more importantly, when we're actually eating and drinking in the mouth, there's something going on called retronasal olfaction. And this is where the aromatics in the food we're eating or drinking goes up the back of the mouth into the nose area, and we receive that as an aroma. And that's really important. There are thousands of aromatic compounds in food and drink, and that's where we can perceive all of those varieties in our food and drink. If you want to try this out, try eating or drinking with your nose firmly held tight, and you'll notice just how much of an impact uh, your sense of smell has on your enjoyment and your perception of flavour. 